presence of the Lord with us. In our Congress this morning, I want to thank our leaders who were out yesterday at the, the ministerial session of the Congress, working through the fundamental issues that must guide and inform our future. This morning, I want to share with us the assembly of the Fellowship Tabernacle family of churches. What we understand the Spirit of the Lord to be saying to us, moving from this time into this next season in the purposes of God. So I ask you to listen carefully as I would submit myself to be the instrument of the Spirit of God to speak what we believe is the heart of God, the mind of God, to show the way. We encourage you as every member of the kingdom and of this house, our leaders. And so as leaders, we call you to take responsibility. So we expect you to take notes, careful notes, to hear, to understand what the Spirit of God is saying, to believe it, to do it, and therefore to teach it to others also. I think we want to welcome, we did it early at the beginning, I am not sure if they were with us, but I do know now that our Fort Lauderdale churches will also welcome. Come on, let's just give a shout out to the Fort Lauderdale church joining us. Good morning, guys. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking. Yes, yes, yes. I see Paul it in the far corner. Yeah. All oh, right, be yourself, Miller. Okay, but it's so good to join with you this morning and to have you sharing with us in our Congress. We want you to, the leaders there, that we will make available to you yesterday, yesterday's activities so that you can have a sense and join in a flow with us with what God is doing with us in this hour. But now let's turn and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us in this Congress, our sixth and our 32nd year anniversary as a movement in divine destiny and purpose. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word is quick and powerful. We thank you, Lord, that you still speak to men. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us to represent you in our world today so we thank you that we are here and you are with us and holy ghost we welcome you you are the teacher you are the guide you are the comforter and now i yield to you as a clay vessel and ask for the anointing of your spirit come holy ghost and anoint this clay vessel to with precision Proclaim your word today that your people might hear, that in hearing they might understand, so that in understanding they might believe, that in believing they might be transformed, that we all together will become the righteousness of God in Christ and to effectively represent your purposes in the earth, an absolute privilege that you have given to us. Amen. 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 I want to be as succinct, but yet clear. And so walk with me. As we share, I'm sure there may be questions that will come to your mind. Feel free to write them down as other opportunities will allow to get clarity to understand what we're saying, what we mean by some of what we say and the direction that we must take. So do flow with me. We remain with our theme, our overarching theme for the last three or four years with different focus 
each year and we're still with that until we feel the Spirit of God says that's it. But our overall theme remains demonstrating teams, demonstrating kingdom lifestyle in oneness and power. Teams demonstrating kingdom lifestyle in oneness and power. And our focus this year, as the last two years, we talked about reigning and reconciling. Our focus this year is apprehending and applying. Apprehending and applying. And that is drawn, of course, from the book of Philippians, chapter 3. But, beloved, at this time, in divine purpose in our world, the Spirit of the Lord, I really believe the Spirit of the Lord, is saying to us, personally and corporately, apprehend that for which you were apprehended by the Lord. The word apprehend really means to take a hold of. So take a hold of what God or for the purpose for which God in Christ took a hold of you. The NIV will use that phrase easily understood. So take a hold of that for which Christ took a hold of you. This forms, this statement forms the base for our theme for this year because as in 2016, we did talk about celebrate that as we celebrated our 30th year in 2016, we was the year we says at 30 was the year of public presentation. And in that public presentation, we were called by the Spirit of God under this theme to now prepare to reign and reconcile. And so we talked about what it took to reign and to reconcile all of it was preparing ourselves by the Spirit of God because we didn't even know where we going. because we were doing that Spirit of God says that's the theme now and we follow it now that what he's saying today we see exactly what he was saying preparing us for this hour so reigning and reconciling and we stuck with that theme we felt for 2016 and 2017 reigning and reconciling that we must reign and reconcile because we are a kingdom of kings and priests unto God. So we must reign as kings and in our office as priests reconcile men unto God. And this is the essence of what we are called to do in service in our world. But now we must move to the next dimension. We must now fully demonstrate the kingdom by apprehending it and applying it in every facet of our lives, in all of our interactions, in everything that we do. We got to apprehend this kingdom. And having gotten a hold of the kingdom, then we must apply the principles of the kingdom, live the principles of the kingdom, operate in the power of the kingdom, that the life of the kingdom of the living God will be manifested in us and through us before the world in which we live. And so, saints of God, this is our sixth Congress and our 32nd anniversary. And all we can say is, thanks be to God, we've come this far by faith. He has brought us to this hour. We have come a mighty long way. We have seen great moments of triumph. We have done much. We have touched many lives. We have trod new ground 
and we have entered into new frontiers over the years. We have had our disappointments. We have made our mistakes. But in every step of the way, the Lord has been with us because he gave us the guarantee, go, and lo, I am with you always. So the Lord has been with us. We have been shaken. Ah. We have been sifted. We have been refined. We have been tried and tested. Yet, we are still standing today. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Oh, they say, through it all, said Andre Kraut. I learned to trust in Jesus. And I learned to trust in God. So there were times when we thought we wouldn't make it. But somebody said, had it not been for the Lord on my side, then tell me, where would I be? But I heard Paul saying, his grace is sufficient for me. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so today, having done all, we stand. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You may ask the question, why have we been through all that we have gone through? Let me tell you, it is to be purified and prepared for purpose and destiny. What you go through in life, the experiences you have in life, have one intention for God is to perfect you and to prepare you for your eternal destiny. And so I want you to know that what we have been through has been the hand of God. The hand of God which has skillfully guided every path, orchestrated everything, and even what the enemy meant for evil. He worked his mighty hand and cause it all to work together for good. Because, you see, we were called to build a model of the church in the 21st century with 21st century relevance. We have had to study to understand what that meant and what it looks like. Over the last couple of years, you have, asked, you have heard me asking you many, many times, what does a 21st century church look like? What does a 20th century, 21st century children's ministry, youth ministry, men's ministry, women's ministry look like? What does a 21st century church flowing in a society, what does it look like? So we've been asking the question, and we have asked you to seek the Lord for answers. It's been the subject of our prayer meetings. It's been the subject of much discussion. It's been the subject of meditation to understand it, because to that we have been called. Ah, beloved. But I want to ask you, have we answered the question? Do we know what it is? We're nearer to it today. And that's why I bring you good news. It took time and many, many, many <laughs> searching and questioning and looking. But it took time. And many have misunderstood. But his grace has kept us and carried us to the now. The wisdom of God has given us in this passage of time by revelation and clarity. He is now showing us better what the model of the church in the 21st century should look like. And so therefore we are saying the model of the church of the 21st century, it is to model the kingdom of God to model the kingdom nation, 
as a sample to the world. So the 21st century church is to be a model of the kingdom of God to the world. We are to be the sample, and you know what a sample is. That's what the church is to be, the sample of the kingdom of God. And so this means a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of being as a people. We cannot be church like we have been church. We cannot be church as we have traditionally known church and how we have practiced church. We have to now act like a nation, a nation meeting the total needs of the total man for the total mission of the church. And so we will have to take great care to get it right as an example of the kingdom. We got to get it right. So tell your neighbor with me, we must take great care to get it right. Because you see, we are the example to the world. And so if we mess up, if we get it wrong, we're going to give the world the wrong impression. And we're going to misrepresent God and his kingdom. And so over this next season, we've got to be steady to ship. We've got to take greater care. We've got to be precise and be careful to get it right. Fellowship Tabernacle is one of the chosen ministries or churches if you prefer the word around the world chosen for this assignment we're one of the few and we're among the leaders of this move of God and it must be for us a humbling thing but it is a privilege and that's why we must understand what we are called to do and what is expected of us and how we must then live and how we've got to raise the bar on personal life, on corporate life, on church life, on home life, in every area of life because we are now modeling the kingdom of the living God before a world, preparing a world for the imminent return of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King, our Master. We are chosen. And so I say to you today, as in the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12, he says, We have not yet, come on, beloved, I am using his words. Here is it Fellowship Tabernacle. We have not yet apprehended that for which Christ has apprehended us. Therefore, one thing we must now do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, we must now press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. What is the prize of the high calling of God? I want to suggest to you that high calling of God, the prize of the high calling is that we might win the kingdom, that we might receive the kingdom that Jesus says, I have given it to you. My father has conferred a kingdom on me and I confer on you a kingdom so we are called to receive to enter the kingdom of the living God and to be hears and joint hears with Christ to reign with him in his eternal kingdom it is that to which we have been called called to be made the righteousness of God in Christ called to be perfect as he is perfect called to bear the same image of the living God. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege. Father, we thank you. We thank you. 
So it's the kingdom of God. And therefore we have got to forget everything behind. Ah, what we have done, how we have done it, how we have known it. Ah, you got to forget that now. Nah. Oh, you got to look ahead. Come on, you've got to look ahead. The kingdom, you got to live it. Demonstrate it to the world. Come on, you heard me? We have to what? Live it and demonstrate it to the world. Oh, glory. This has to become fellowship tabernacle going forward. A kingdom nation demonstrating the very life and the purposes of God to the world. We are a kingdom within a kingdom. And we must become the evidence <laughs> that our kingdom is a superior kingdom to every other kingdom. I don't want to go there this morning, but I can see it in Daniel. And you must go read Daniel and see when Daniel begins to tell us that he saw a stone coming out and it crushed everything else that existed. Every other kingdom was smashed to splinterines. You got to know that the kingdom of the living God is the kingdom of kingdoms. And the book of Revelation takes us to the end and he says the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And we shall reign with him forever and ever and ever. That is your destiny. And that's why you can't fool with your life. Your eternal destiny is to reign with Christ and rule the entire created universe. I don't know, you might well be sent to Jupiter to take care of it. I don't know. But we're going to reign with him in the world. So his kingdom in the earth was always on the divine agenda. Come on, walk with me. His kingdom in the earth, I'm repeating it, was always the divine agenda. It began with Adam. But we know Adam messed up. And so he's renewed it, started again with Abraham. And it built from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the 12 sons to the 70 went down to Egypt. And then they became a great nation, millions. Ah. And so it was now, now that they became enough to become a nation, this kingdom nation of God was enacted with Moses and Joshua to be Israel as we know it now. God's nation, God's chosen people. But that's natural Israel. But then Jesus came and he revealed and introduced the spiritual kingdom that it consumes and includes the natural world. Jesus came to reveal it and to introduce it because it was the promise to dominate the earth. So he brought it into the earth and he authorized and sent out 12 disciples to lay the foundation of this new kingdom, spiritual, all, em, all, all, all impacting, all consuming, overarching kingdom of the living God. He sent these 12 apostles. He said, go lay this foundation that this foundation you lay must now begin to grow and develop into all the nations of the earth that, to, that you must fully manifest and then perfect through the end time church. Oh Lord, the kingdom of the living God. Come on, let me say that again another way that you get it. The apostles started it. He sent them out. And he says, you lay the foundation. So they laid the foundation. And therefore, as men would come into the kingdom, 
by the work that they did, it would begin to build. Just as our God told Abraham, the stars of, this, of the skies, you would not count it. It would become a number, a great number that no man could number, and it would grow. So therefore, the early church started the foundation of this new kingdom of God, released with new understanding. And so, it's the end time church that must now manifest it in its fullness. Lord, help and not just manifest it in its fullness we must perfect it so that the world will see and know that God is and that he rules and that his kingdom is the greatest and there is none other like it and so in Acts 2 the new kingdom nation was launched. Come on. That's what Acts 2 was about. Was launching or the inauguration, if you please, of the new kingdom. And it was inaugurated with 3,000 souls. As Peter preached, adding to those believers that already existed. So now this new nation was over 3,000 strong. And I want to quickly make the point to you, they operated not like a church. They operated as a kingdom. Because the message that they carried was, the kingdom has come. And so now was birth this nation. And let me show you something here. Oh, come on with me. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And you go down to verse 44. Verse 44. Verse 44. And all that believed were together. Now, notice. This over 3,000 plus those that followed Jesus and was there before. So now I believe thousands followed him. Some fell off but now there was not 2,000 I don't know how much but 2,000 plus so there were thousands of them and notice the wording and all not a few let me not a few let me hear the house say all all, all that believed were together Lord oh, mercy one nation and what's the next phrase they had all things common. Oh, glory. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued. Ah, come on, this new nation. And they continued, continuing daily with what? One accord in the temple and the breaking of bread. And from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and the singleness of heart. That's why it says the kingdom of God is not just meat and drink, but it is what? righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost because from there they ate and fellowship with gladness of heart so one one thing you must know about this kingdom when we get together when how we live it is with joy and peace and gladness of heart we must be happy so put on your kingdom face come on tell your neighbor put on your kingdom face Smile and nod, smile and nod, smile and nod. Look happy, look happy, come on. Yes, look happy. Because this kingdom, it is such a great kingdom. It's a kingdom where all your needs are met. There is no lack in this kingdom. Everybody love everybody. Everybody look after everybody. Everybody care for everybody. Because we are the kingdom of the living God. The sample to the world. 
Tell your neighbor, that's where we're going. That's how we must be. We must find a way. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. So, let me give you one more scripture. That you understand that the early church was a nation. They operated like a nation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. It's giving you a snippet. But you understand it. We hear all kind of talk out there. From all kinds of theologians. Who have no sense of the kingdom of the living God. And they do not understand what they speak. They study about God. But they don't have a relationship with the God they study. And so they are interpreting God with their humanistic reasoning. And not interpreting God by revelation of the spirit of the God. Who sends the Holy Spirit to teach us his word. So they, we, we don't reason to know the word of God. And it doesn't mean you don't reason. But you reason with a sanctified mind led by the Spirit of God. Then you will discover the heart and the mind of God. So Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6. What should he says there? Uh, is that second or first? Okay. Oh, glory. It says here. Dear, sorry, it's maybe first then. I could be wrong. It's first. First Corinthians. But you should know that, guys, you're spiritual. <laughs> All kingdom people are supernatural. You discern. Pick it up by revelation. First Corinthians 6, verse 1. Dear, listen to what Paul says. Only see nation. It says, dear any of you, having a matter against another, Go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? <laughs> and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the small matters? Of our daily lives. He says come on wake up and smell the coffee. Verse 4. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life. Set them to judge who are least esteemed. No, no this is dangerous. Who are least esteemed in the church. Are we not troubled that today? I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. That's a nation. Has its own justice system to deal with the issues. That's a nation. Had its own economic system. So that nobody lacked. And notice he says all of them. So the thousands of them. We got to find the answers. Oh Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I hope you're still in church today. Sorry. I hope you are in the kingdom and have left the church. As we have known it. And know that you have now stepped into kingdom so the kingdom nation is designed by God as he spoke it to Abraham from Genesis 12 the kingdom nation is to be the channel through which all the nations of the earth are to be blessed and we have been in for the last couple of weeks on that same passage is repeated where God now says you are a, in, in Deuteronomy 7 that you are a holy nation, the royal priesthood. And then Peter comes and repeats it for us in whom everything is fulfilled in Christ. You are 
a holy nation, the royal priesthood. And it is because it is through us the nations of the world is to be blessed. I don't think anybody just hear that. Give me 30 seconds more on it. What I said a while ago. Lord of mercy. Come on. You got to begin to think the implications of that. The blessing of this world is tied to the kingdom of the living God. And what God will do in the earth, he will do it through the kingdom, through his people. So the blessing of the earth rests with us. That's why who you bless is blessed. Who you curse is cursed. Hey, and who curse you, God will curse. That's why you will possess the gates of your enemies and none shall be able to stand before you because you represent the living God and the power of the highest will overshadow and be with you always so it means we got to rise to a level in how we operate that we bless the world you must can look at people around you and bless them and let me tell you when the scripture says bless you know what it means Sorry, no, 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 you know my pocket, but come here, Ron. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Bless me with this. Thank you. Glory to God. And now, bless him. To bless is to give. I bless him. So when you want to bless somebody, impart. It's about impartation. It is giving. So if we want to bless the nations of the world, we have to impart to them the love of God the miracle working power of God we have got to be able to give them of our resources and so therefore that means you have to have resources to give tell your neighbor church is about to change because you can't bless somebody if you don't have nothing to give that's why you must start Sing. Nothing in my you come a church. Nothing in my hand I bring, but simply to the cross I cling. There was a time for that, but the time has now come where you have to say, "Forget those things which are behind," and reaching forth to those things which are before. When you come you have something to give. I come to give him praise. I come to exalt his holy name. I come to bless the brethren to fellowship, to give them a word of wisdom, a prophetic word, a word of encouragement, because I'm giving out of the storehouse of God that is on my inside, because we're drinking from a fountain that never shall run dry. We are feasting on manna from a bountiful supply it is an inexhaustible supply so you always have something to give to the world it is through the church or for our purposes let's stop saying that because that's the thing that's trapping our minds is through the kingdom that all the nations of the earth to be blessed but the church is okay once you understand the church because all the church is is the, those who administrate the affairs of the kingdom we got to get it right we got to get it right we got to get it right the world is waiting for you that's why Romans says the whole earth groans why is it groaning waiting for the sons of God <laughs> waiting for the kings of the earth to arise that's the hope of the world that's why Paul says in this world only you have hope you are among men most miserable until we bring the kingdom of God men will remain hopeless in this world With that said then, where the kingdom nation is to be the channel 
through which all the nations of the earth is to be blessed. That's it for scriptures. You can go back to the PowerPoint, guys. Therefore, we must have, follow me, a clear governance structure because it's a nation we're running, a kingdom. We must have a clear governance structure. structure. And the government of the kingdom, the governance of this kingdom must be tasked to meet the total needs of the total man. They must create and facilitate all that is necessary to do so. So that's the job. When we meet together as leaders of the church, we must be coming together in the governance council where we are talking about not just how to get one and two to heaven, we are talking about how to win a world and how to meet the total needs of the total man that they can live in the joy of the Lord with gladness of heart. Everybody going quiet on me. Governance structure. It must have a strong family development program because God's kingdom is built on families that become clans and form tribes, etc. It must have an effective justice system. It must have a good security system. It must have a good internal system. It must have good internal systems and structures so that there can be order, management, they can be care of the people. There are effective laws. There are principles and protocols that guide that, that, that the, the, the kingdom. It must have a strong kingdom expansion force. A force with mighty men and women of God who are more than conquerors. Who are going out on a daily basis to conquer new territory for the kingdom of the living God. We call it evangelism but it is about conquering territory taking over the whole earth and the first pieces of earth we take over are men's lives and then we spread into the geographic space and the very physical earth but it begins with the individual so therefore when I'm Winning lives to Christ, men to Christ, I'm really taking the earth. <laughs> because every man was, is a piece of what? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you understand it. You got it. Hence, watch me now as I tie this together. Don't, 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 don't lose me. Therefore, and I say, therefore, and hear me, all churches... In fellowship tabernacle family, hear it. Therefore, cores, which are our small groups, will play the central role in this phase of kingdom citizens. Cores go and play the central role. Because it is in them that there has to be the bonding together. The learning together. The working together for the common good. Cores will be centers to meet needs. To disciple. To fellowship. To serve. To mature. And impact. Ah. Community. It is only in cores that we can ensure your spiritual and physical health. Only in cores we can ensure your wealth creation. Only in cores we can ensure your family life strengthening so that you can have a successful life. It is through cores that you will access all the benefits of the kingdom of God. I want you to notice that Israel was structured 
on family, small groups. Tribes and clans camped, watch it. It was structured on small groups. Tribes and clans camped around the tabernacle. The tabernacle was in the center and on the four sides were the tribes looking to the tabernacle, drawing from the tabernacle so that when they come to camp, they are camping around the tabernacle. And what's the tabernacle? The tabernacle represented the presence of God. So they camped around the place of the presence, the tabernacle. So the believer must camp around the place of the presence the tabernacle of God you have to make sure your house become a place of the presence and the corporate tabernacle is the place of the presence that's where we encamp around so that the tabernacle the place of the present must become central in your life that church is not a side issue a church or sorry man the tabernacle the house of God, the place of worship, must become the place of primary focus because that's where your life source comes from. Worship and word. Tell your neighbor what? Worship and word. Fellowship with God and man. So Israel operated like that. This is the only way. And you notice that all in Israel, all was in a family. Or each person was in a family belonging to a clan in a tribe. So this is the only way each could properly be accounted for, be cared for, be provided for, and to be protected. So we have to show the kingdom in operation, meeting the total needs of the total man in a rich atmosphere of worship and fellowship with God and with man around the word of God. And so, beloved, I now want to just turn and show you how we go for the next couple of years. Because we have for the last year, like we said to you, with a tremendous team, have been working on this strategic plan. And that has been why we couldn't do a lot of what we said we would have done during the, the year. And those who got a little frustrated, we apologize for that from one standpoint, but we could only move with the cloud. And so we, we just had to wait it out until we got the plan because you can't move till you get the plan now we got the plan ready to move and so there is this 160 page document that has been put together to now inform us how to establish the, the king the guide for the kingdom and for the work of the church who must administrate the kingdom in the earth and so let me just share with you where we are. So as a result, therefore, come with me here for a moment, that we have redefined our vision and our mission. You'll see it up, and they're putting it up there for you. We are redefining our vision, or we have redefined our vision and mission. And it will be broken down in ways so that it's biteable for you to chew on. But conceptually here, is the new vision statement or the re re redefined vision statement more shorter, simpler, and direct? It's, we are, our vision is to be apostolic, and by that we are saying we follow the biblical kingdom model, the apostolic model in order of government. So we are apostolic, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So we are apostolic, love-driven, supernatural kingdom nation partners discipling Jamaica and the nations. 
It's our vision, our mission to produce disciples who are love-driven and supernatural, partnering together to influence Jamaica and the nations in every critical sphere with the culture, philosophy, tenets, and ways of the kingdom of the living God. That's our mission. And you got to get that down in your craw, if you have one. But you got to get it inside of your system. Because every, every waking moment of your lives, we must know that this is what we are called to do. We are going every day to produce disciples. That's what we're working at inside this fellowship tabernacle. Producing disciples who are love-driven and supernatural. Partnering together to influence Jamaica and the nations in every critical sphere with the culture, philosophy, tenets, and ways of the kingdom of the living God. And then every mission must be driven by its core values, its behavior, its way of thinking. And so we have our core values, three basic core values, but the third is broken down into a number in order to understand kingdom. But it is one love-driven, supernatural, and that means by supernatural, the fruit and gifts of the Spirit is what drive our lives. That's what we mean by supernatural, demonstrating fruit and gifts. And then the third core value is we are kingdom nation focused. That is demonstrating the kingdom lifestyle, deliberately seeking opportunities to influence decision in every facet of our nation while ensuring that the principles and ethic and power of the kingdom of God is understood and govern our speech, our attitudes, and our actions in daily living. And therefore, that drives us to a number of things we must do. It means we have to be open to change, be committed to fellowship, to praise, prayer, and worship, to practicing and living faith, committed to family, to teamwork, to discipline, and to practicing integrity and excellence. And then thirdly, we will strengthen the foundation pillars, which you see them there on the wall. Evangelism, fellowship, worship and prayer, discipleship, service. These are the foundation pillars. And then we have set for the next few years what we have referred to as seven strategic priorities. And the seven strategic priorities are one, organizational alignment. And then partner care, caring for you, all of our partners. Three, creating the right culture, a family culture. That's what we want with love and support for each other. Number four, creating, want to create the supernatural. Create effective kingdom managers that our leaders who manage the process must be effective. And effective kingdom partners who are able to fulfill the purposes of God in our respective spheres. And the seventh strategic priority is impacting the nation and the marketplace. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's the priorities. That's how we're setting it. And within all of that now, we have a whole slew of activities that we will be doing. And in order to flesh this out, then we're going to be training, retraining every member of the church in kingdom lifestyle, training every leader at every level so that we understand and develop the kingdom culture within us so that we can demonstrate it to the world. And so as of January, training begins because we've got to move with agility and urgency because a nation is waiting to see the kingdom of God arise. And so our focus for 2018, 2019, just let me share these five things with you quickly. One, kingdom order. 
kingdom order. God has set the kingdom and set the kingdom in order and order the kingdom. And that is going to be heavily about what I just said, training, core life, because that's going to be the center, the core life and core culture. Number two, the Live Love campaign, going to drive our conquering side of us, going out there to conquer. We got to restore the ministries, all of our ministries now this year, we got to restore them and have them operating in excellence. And number four, developing all discipleship and kingdom citizenship training material. Because all that we're saying here now, we've got to go write material for children, for, for youth, for adults, for the family, for every area in discipling and training how to be an effective kingdom citizen. So discipling for our spiritual development and maturity, the training in kingdom citizenship, the principles and protocols of the kingdom so that we are able to effectively function. So this year, we want everybody who can write, who got a mind, you got to help us to write. We want all the teachers, every, we got all of your ideas, everything you think that we should be trained in, begin to write it down so that we can put it together to build out a curriculum that therefore when a person enters the kingdom of God, we are ready to lead them from birth to maturity into fulfilling life's mission to death and resurrection again in Christ. And so, beloved, I charge you, therefore, in the name of our King, the King of the kingdom, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master, go from here today. And as you go from here today, I charge you again in the name of the Lord to determine in your heart to demonstrate the kingdom. Come on, Fort Lauderdale. Get it. Mandeville. Get it. Portmore. Get it. Kingston. Get it. We've got to go from here determined to demonstrate the kingdom of the living God. We've got to desire to intentionally and deliberately apprehend the kingdom culture to apprehend the principles and protocols and practices and having apprehended them applying them to life so that like mature citizens we must go live love live love Live by faith. Serve like your Lord. He went about doing good in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Go do it. Now is the time. What we have known is behind us. We must now, forgetting those things which are behind, press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. We got to do it now. Are you ready? Are you ready? I want you to think about it, man. You got to get committed because now we are moving with strength and power to make it happen. With your bow your heads with me in prayer.